We call the meeting to order. We'll start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> All right. Approval of the agenda. Do you have anything to add? Yes. <laughs> my favorite part of the meeting. Surprise, yeah. surprise. <laughs> we are going to remove agenda 6A under new business, request from Dan Patriot of Case Butter to be placed on the agenda to discuss the development on their property. Patriot today and everything is happening. Okay. That's it. Um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, while you're asking, we could replace uh, A with old business B, if you would like. The rec director is here, and she'd like to address um, the board of selectmen. And since it's on the agenda, I can't allow it to happen in public comment period. Yeah. Acceptable you, Mr. Chair? It's fine with me. On um, the uh, updates, like now, all day tree. That's correct. Yeah. All day tree. That's why you're here, right, Jen? That's why I'm here. Uh, motion approved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Next agenda is a public forum. This is uh, this is a point in the meeting where if anybody has any discussions or public comments on non-agenda items, now is the time to do so. Is there anybody from the public that would like to make comment or have a question for the board? Hearing none, we'll move on to approval of minutes. November 10th, 2014, welcome minutes. Tuesday, December 9, 2014, at 7 p.m. in the fire station meeting room, 468 Limerick Road. The Economic Development Committee meets Tuesday, December 9, 2014, at 6 p.m. in the Weir's Motor Sales Conference Room, 1513 Portland Road. And the Planning Board meets Thursday, December 11, 2014, at 7 p.m. here in the library. This will be a joint meeting with the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee. Uh, just for clarification, that Board of Assessment Review meeting is a continuation of the meeting that occurred last week. Um, so they will continue deliberations on that appeal. Okay. I have a couple of items that are on the Planning Board and RSU 21. I'll start with the Planning Board meeting of November 13th. Uh, they had a couple of pending applications. The first one was Stone Ridge Farm Gravel Pit, which was a conditional use application. A uh, proposal to renew existing mineral extraction permit for a 10.5 acre gravel pit located on the south side of Curtis Road on property identified as tax map 23, lot 4 in the R4 district. Stone Ridge Farms Inc. are the owners and Mark Walton and Sons are the applicant and the agents. Um, they discussed uh, that the planning board uh, determined the application as complete. And they have a, uh, set up a December 11th public hearing for that. Ornal Seasonal Cottage Preserve, uh, they uh, request to amend the conditions of the subdivision. Um, they requested to amend the instrument and the amount of construction surety required for phase one of the approved Ornal Seasonal Cottage Preserve. Uh, you know, it's a big project, it's uh, a lot of money, and uh, they asked to, uh, to kind of set it up so that it goes in stages. Uh, in, in the phases that they're doing the construction. The, the agreement they agreed upon was a third party agreement and uh, for phase 1A, which is the entry, the first um, 11 units on Cottage Road, um, there's four other units um, and they want to uh, they want to just be able to pay that. So, you know, Ted was okay, uh, I'm just on board with that, so they got that approval. Um, they had some other discussions, they showed plans of the community center 
you know, the pool, the kiddie pool, the fire pit, uh, the outside fitness, etc. you know, stuff like that. And, um, and it looked pretty good. They also wanted to start the work prior to the surgery. Uh, the work that they wanted to do was just basic, uh, you know, protection of wetlands, uh, just some small work, just some prep work in order to get the, uh, uh, to, to start the project going, and, and the board gave them approval to do that. So that was that. Uh, they got into the uh, gateway district standards. Uh, Tad presented a couple of items, a, a couple of uh, uh, similarities on, on, on which standards to use. He used some standards from the townhouse corner districts, and he showed them some standards on the DB1. Uh, the board decided to go with the standards. Um, that was very similar to the townhouse corner district. Uh, townhouse corner district planners report: a seasonal cottage was uh, getting basically ready to start. There's a tank farm on Branch Brook. And it's going for admin review. There's also another business that's going to be coming in on Enterprise Drive. AIM is working on their DEP permit. Uh, Southern Maine Motors has started working on their site. Motorland, a new uh, business, uh, took over the county connections, which uh, used to be uh, mainly RV. Um, they, they deal with antique cars, so that's, uh, that looked pretty good. Uh, Tad mentioned a little bit about, for those of you that, that voted, uh, it was a survey. I'm not sure if you participated, but he had photos in the survey of what different um, questionnaire on, you know, what, uh, what does rural mean to you? We've got a hundred back from that questionnaire, and there was more coming as it was going along. So I was uh, happy with that. We gave the board an update on the Dubois ruling. I asked them on the educational piece of Kate's conditional approval. When Kate's butter was approved, one of the conditions was that they provide an educational um, thing for local schools. And that hasn't happened yet. Granted, they just started opening, but um, and, and Tad took down some notes and I was going to follow up with them and find out what was going on with that. And uh, basically, it, I think at the time that we adjourned, but it wasn't that long of a meeting. <laughs> that was that. RSU meeting, RSU 21 meeting, I wasn't there, but I watched it live. So, uh, the board of directors meeting on November 17th, Elaine Tomaszewski is the um, She's with the Main School Management Association. She gave an update to, to the board on their superintendent search. They offer um, uh, you know, to work with schools to, to go after you know, if you want to do a superintendent. So she, she showed them a list of, uh, uh, of all the options that they have and what they can offer the RSU. There were some discussions uh, on who the RSU has used in the past. And the last two searches, the school used uh, what's called uh, School Spring. I guess it's a web-based system that they've used. And, um, and then they updated on the building projects. PC Construction definitely has an interest in doing a project at no cost. In, in their initial quote, they had, I forget what the dollar amount was, but in their initial quote, they had a uh, dollar figure for doing that, that first part of the project. And they decided to do it at no cost. Uh, they're going to come back to the board on December 10th with their first check-in. Their second check-in will be January 5th, and on January 20th, they're going to have their estimate to the administrative team, and then they're taking everything to the board on January 26th. Um, what they're going to do is bid the original scope uh, using the October 31 plan. And uh, let's see, then the board had a discussion on the um, MSMA versus the school, school spring. School spring is a lower cost, and what the board decided to do is uh, spend more money on advertising this time than they did the last time to broaden the search. And, uh, you know, it's still it's cheaper than the um, MSMA. Even if they added some some of that advertisement cost, so they're gonna. It was a motion to use a uh, school spring going forward for that search. Uh, they're gonna put together a package for the December meeting, and then uh, Susan had a shout out to the Arundel students playing for football, playing football for TA at the state championship game, which they won Saturday, and uh, 
all of those students, you know, were students that had gone to TAMS and had moved up into the Fort Academy. That's it. Questions, comments? Jack, you were, were you at the meeting? Mm -hmm. I was. Yeah, yes. Anything to add? I, th I think the one comment I would make is that uh, the board uh, definitely decided not to use consecutively the first uh, construction management firm, chose the second with the objective of further driving down the price. Mm -hmm. PC construction, as you indicated, waived the, uh, I think, a $25,000 fee uh, in order to uh, move ahead with that, with the dates you described. That's about it. Okay. Moving on to new business. Uh, town manager request for authorization to expend $5,098. Oh, geez, yeah, we're going to jump up here. <laughs> Jen again. Yeah. All right, Jen, you want to give us an update on the holiday tree? Thank you. If you haven't been by the town hall since Saturday to see the beautiful tree that Phil and his crew put in place for us, you should. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. For the time that you gave to bring that in. It really looks so good. It's a perfect tree. When you go by Town Hall, you'll think that the tree that was removed is still there because it's in the location yeah. of the old tree. And uh, thank you to Mr. Andrew Smith as well who donated the tree to the town. Um, it, it looks great. It was pretty windy today out there. And uh, it's still standing, Phil. So <laughs> thank yeah. you very, very much, Phil. Uh, made an effort to get over here. Apparently, you got to get up at the crack of dawn to catch Phil doing anything. So I pulled into Town Hall at 1130. And, the tree was there and no one else was. So yeah. it, it's, it looks great. And uh, it, they're, it's my understanding that they're decorating it tomorrow, uh, depending on the availability of the ladder truck in general. So. He said yes. He I did talked say yes. Okay. He said it would be here at 9. Excellent. So, so they water that tree, or is it that there's not a water? You don't want it today. No. I, yeah, yeah, we wanted it today. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get some water Thanksgiving or Wednesday night into Thanksgiving. Phil, you said that you spoke to, was it Kenny Monk and they don't? No, I, did, I didn't speak to Roger them. But I, I, I've heard that they don't need water. Portland doesn't. Portland doesn't. Yeah, I, okay. So we just put it in the tube that Roger installed. And buy some fur colored spray paint and maybe use the same tree next year. <laughs> the brown needles uh, okay. green. Thank you very, very much, Phil. It looks it looks amazing. I think the community is going to be very happy with the tree. You're welcome. It was an effort by a lot of people. Public Works put some put some time into that, and the man that donated the tree, it's appreciated. Excellent. Okay, item B. Town manager requests for authorization to expand five thousand ninety-eight dollars and sixty-seven cents from the contingency capital reserve for legal expenses in regard to seasonal cottages tip. This will be reimbursed by the developer. And the developer has been working very hard to reimburse us on these legal fees, but there are a few different accountants at the firm, and so on occasion they'll accidentally write the check by the Bernstein share, so we have to send them the check back. But they have been reimbursing us, um, and you know that's that was part of the stipulation to move forward um, to have them pay us back. So. Well, Bernstein, I want to spell your name right. Yes, I know, Todd C. Yeah. I, I didn't even call it to tell him. It's been on every invoice. Oh, so yes. I, yes. I just noticed it. Yes. Okay, we're going to entertain a motion from the board to do so. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Town Manager and a Public Works Director request for authorization to expend funds not to exceed $5,000 from Public Works Capital Reserve for potential vehicle purchase at the Maine Army National Guard Federal Surplus Auction. What have you got in store for us, Roger? Cheap rides. Well, we actually looked at it originally. It's probably not available anymore, but I'm going out there tomorrow to look at some of the possibilities. Basically, the cost for these things is 3% of the original purchase price. So, depending on the unit, it's 
about 2500 bucks for this type of truck. We were planning on getting two, one to be made as a chip truck. Some of our original government surplus pickups are dying off on us. And at this point, you know, the mid-80s vehicles, you cannibalize them to keep the other ones going, and that's about it. So there is a need. We would either immediately make one of them a chip truck and also make it into a plug truck. So that's the plan. That doesn't mean we're going to come home with anything because you, you go on the GSA website and they show one thing and a screening date, and the next time you look at it, they're gone. There's nothing at all on it for that location. These are camp keys in Augusta. Hmm. Very low mileage, very low hours. Yeah. Like Glenn just said, the, the original equipment they were looking at to state the price to the government was 87000 on there? 86 and some change, so 3% of that was $2,600 and some change. And uh, these guys are pretty good. The crew down at Public Works is really good at making things last a long time. Um, and I think Roger filled us in on the problems with the F 550 at the last meeting. So, um, so you want ahead. funds available so that if all of a sudden you see something boom, you can move right on it? Yeah. That was, you know, in theory, the, the plan. <clears throat> but getting a date of when they're going to let them yeah, to release them is problematic. <laughs> they don't even update their own website. Somebody in New Hampshire does it. So. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to be there, Roger? Well, I've got to go to look and screen what particular models. They don't even give you EMA mileage and hours on, on these all the time. They just leave that section blank. So. And originally, somebody from state surplus would actually go to these federal auctions and list what was on available. And the state's got that, so they don't do that anymore. So where where are these gates? These are camp keys, which is in the right next to the airport. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, do I hear a motion from the board? Make a motion that we authorize the public works director to expend those funds if he sees fit that it's the right piece of equipment to fit our needs. I'll second that. Do we see five thousand? Okay. Discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. No Thank assault you. vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? No assault vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> there is a tax at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a monument more than anything else. I've seen times that occasionally when you could use them. So <laughs> I'm sure Terry wouldn't mind driving the tank. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't mind driving the tank. You probably charge people the right. Exactly right. Yeah. Get tired of it real fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, item D, Selectman appoint Charles Bassett to the Economic Development Committee. Mr. Bassett has a wonderful resume. He's very excited to be joining the group. Um, he's recently moved back to Arundel. Um, he wants to get involved in the community. Um, and Charlie would almost, not Charlie Chip, would almost round out the entirety of the EDC at this point in time. So I highly recommend him to the Economic Development Committee. So moved. Okay. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? Has anybody met? Chip? I got to He is this spot. Always play a card on the side. Pretty good job. Okay. All those in favor? I'll recuse myself. Okay. Motion passes one recusal. Okay, town manager requests for authorization to close town offices on Friday, December 26th and provide employees with an additional, with an additional holiday paid day off. I've got sucker written across my forehead, so uh, I'm here to ask you to close town hall on Friday. Uh, the, the holiday falls on Wednesday and Thursday. I have listed it as holiday paid day off and not administrative paid day off because my luck, Mother Nature's going to throw some snow at us. Uh, and there's special rules and regulations in regard to holiday pay when it comes to employees that are called into duty um, when they're off. I'm not going to grovel, I'm not going to bang, I'm going to leave it up to the 
this I should have reported. You did something similar to this last year. Yes, so I did that. Last year, what we did was we, you, the board authorized me to close on personnel policy says that we're open half a day on Christmas Eve. So what we did is close the whole day Christmas Eve. This year, we'll be open till noon on Christmas Eve, close Thursday and Friday. Okay. Any motion? Second. Any motion and a second. Any further discussion on this? I just have a question. How is this paid? Is this paid like a holiday? Is it paid out of the PTO? It's paid as a holiday out of the admin, uh, out of the appropriate line for their department. Unless it snows. Unless it snows. Then it's paid out over time. And how many, just out of curiosity, how many days does this bring them up to in regards to holidays? This would be 13. Just so you know, if no one else out there in the public gets 13 days for holidays. We are special. You want to come to my office. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about regular, normal. We can't we can't even request a day off as a PTO day. Hmm. We can't even request it off as a PTO day. Really? We're blacked out for the month of December and part of January. We sure do appreciate their employees, mm -hmm. don't they? Well that's the point. I mean, yeah. So it's the employees here some of the appreciation of paying how well as it is. Um. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Tell manager update selectmen on a Dubois livestock motion for reconsideration in Dubois livestock versus the town of Arundel. The 8th, what is it, the 23rd hour, the 11th hour, um, the filing was made for a motion to, for reconsideration uh, to the Supreme Judicial Court um, in the state of Maine by Dubois. This requires no effort on the, uh, no expenditures of legal funds on the behalf of the town. It's my understanding that and Tom, please correct me if I'm incorrect, that the law court will just review the matter that was before them in order to determine whether or not they feel the decision they made is correct. It's literally a motion for reconsideration. And they are rarely favorably acted. And so it should be another few months before we get back. On the court so I'll keep you updated on that, but uh, the decision was made the Fourth, and I believe it's 14 days window, and we think we were hoping that they did a motion to reconsider. Okay. <coughs> and I will keep you posted, <coughs> posted on the results. Okay. Yep. Next item is to review and sign payroll and AP warrants. Second. And motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> Old business. Update selectmen on anticipated DEC approval of seasonal cottages TIF districts as well as construction schedule. I do not have an update. I spoke to Shauna on Thursday. She expected to hear from the DEC today, but she did not. Um, but I can inform you that, as Dan said, everything's been worked out for the planning board. And still said, about 10 or 15 acres of trees have been cut. The metal building has been removed. Um, Shaw, no, Grondin, Grondin has been awarded the bid. They'll be moving in job trailers. They're doing blast surveys in the next few weeks, and it was anticipated that they will begin blasting before Christmas, and that the um, community center and the first four seasonal cottage units will begin construction in May. Um, so <coughs> we had a, a pre-construction meeting with everybody involved, DEP, Army Corps, Public Works, um, and hopefully we're able to move on the schedule, but they are uh, ready to go. So it'll be nice to see some progress over there. He's anxious. <coughs> yes, sir. Yeah. And with the, uh, the decision of the special town meeting this evening, according to Joe and his marketing team, it'll make, things, it'll make it a lot easier for them to move in and move on a lot faster. Um, we were told by the marketing study that approximately 25% they could expect to move 25% more units uh, per year if that adjustment is made. So 
I think we'll be doing well and moving in the right direction. And as soon as I hear back from BDCD, uh, the details of that, uh, of the TIF, um, the, only, the only issue that was up for discussion was the terms in regards to the definition of seasonal and how restrictive that seasonal requirement was. Uh, the, the DECD is conditioning the approval that the property remains seasonal, that it isn't converted into the year-round properties, and so they Shana and the and Smitty are working on the details of that, so hopefully we'll know something soon. I know that they were waiting for this meeting to go through the meeting previously to this to start their marketing exactly. strategy. So yeah, absolutely. I'm anxious to get going on this. Most certainly. Yeah. Twelve years Joe's only been at that project, so he's happy he's happy to see something happening there. Yeah. I, I remember when I came to the planning board as a campground. So yeah. yeah. Came around in the RV park, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. It took a long time for us just to get a good comp and planning board. So. Had to do it right. Yes. Okay, does uh, the board have any other business? <laughs> yes, Sim? I just would like to put a, kind of a bug in everybody's ear since it's the end of the year and it just came to me that we've been talking about it with the Historical Society, but um, April of, two, of 2015 will be the 100th anniversary of Arundel as North Kenny Bunk Court as established on, I think it was April, I'd have to check if it was April 1st or April 15th of 1915. So we are going to be hitting 100 years as a town. So I don't know if there's something that we could get in the works to kind of celebrate or at least to acknowledge um, that. I can pull the date up to get a date certain on that as far as the incorporation. Um, but it was 1915 when it became North Kenny Bunk Court. And then um, 1957, Sorry. when it became Rondo. But it's going to be 100 years. So. It'd be interesting if it wasn't the first similar thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't remember the date, but um, I can pull the incorporation yeah. papers. That'd and, be great. You know, yeah, we should, mm -hmm. you know, just. It'd be nice to get those buildings cleaned up and look kind of good for Jake's. the anniversary. Boy. No, Jake's been working on that. Yeah, Jake's doing a really good job on the. One closest to the road. A lot of it is funding. Yeah. 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 Bean yeah. suckers yeah. just don't cut it for When he gets a chance, so that's all I'm going to call it. Okay, does the board have anything else? With that, I want to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second. No discussion. All those in favor? Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanks, uh,